Hey, new book. We are reading Luke by James Herbert tonight. Part one. One. The warmth of the sun beat against my eyelids, soft persuasion to open them. Noises crept into my ears and burst through to my consciousness, confusing sounds. A gavel broken by strident pitches. Cautiously, almost unwillingly, I half opened my eyes, keeping them sticky, a soft, moist blue. Through the blur, blur I saw a dark, furry body, big as me, and it heaved ruthlessly up and down, up and down, in a contented sleep. My mouth opened wide as a yawn escaped, and my eyes suddenly snapped fully open. Other bodies lay around me, black and gray, as mixtures of bulls, some of their coats short and straight, others tufty and curly. A flash of light left over to me, and I felt sharp teeth nip at my ear. I pulled away with a whimper. Where was I? Who was I? What was I? Smells came to my nostrils, unpleasant at first, and then strangely pleasing. I wrinkled my nose, breathing in the fumes, powerful odors that somehow made me secure. I wriggled my body closer to the other warm bodies, away from the energetic white pest that finally gave up and bounded towards the surrounding wire. He stood up on his hind legs, resting his paws on the top of the wire, and he's rumped his stubby tail, wagging it slightly. A huge pallid hand reached down, and he was lifted away out of sight. I whimpered again, this time a shock. The hand, so big, so strong, the smells emanating from it, so alien, frightening yet interesting. I tried to snuggle further into the pack of his sluggish fur. Making a contact, I didn't understand. Why was I surrounded by these monster animals, and why did I feel so akin to them? The sleep had left me now, my body quivered with awareness. I was in sort, some sort of pen. It looked very large to me, the floor of which was covered in straw. The wiring around us was high, much higher than me, and my companions were dogs. I don't think I really felt fear at that moment. Probably just confusion. I remember my breath coming out in short panting gasps, and I think I urinated a little, just a check trickle. I know I tried to burrow even further between two plump bodies, the bulk of which I felt some association, some common bond. Now I can guess it was because we were related. At the time, I reacted to instinct alone. I peeped around me, keeping my head low, my jaw firmly tucked into the straw. Everything was so muted. Colors barely distinguishable apart from their varying tones, only hues of grays and muddy browns. Yeah, I saw the colors in my mind's eye because I'd known them before. Before? Before? In a bewildered state, even the question, let alone the answer, evaded me. Now colors were already beginning to filter through, and legacy left to me, a gift of separating me from my fellow creatures. Soft grays turned to light browns, the denser grays to darker browns, the blacks remained black, but deeper. The rainbow flew at me, filling my head with a dazzling variation, blinding in its intensity. The blacks were no longer black, but blue, indigo, hundreds of shades of brown. Their colors hurt my eyes, and I was forced to close them, yet the sun still stung through, and colors still exploded before me, and then the spectrum took its proper order. The colors found their correct balance, the flashes became subdued, and the tones began to relate to each other. I opened my eyes, and the brief monochrome world had vanished, and been replaced by a rich, moving canvas, which each color belonged to itself, yet interlocked and shared with its opposite. Even today, I still delight in everything I see, new, surprising colors revealing themselves without warning, soon to be born freshly before me, only for me to realize they'd always been there, but that I never really looked. The colors are more muted now, but still fresher and more interesting than they've been in the past. I suppose it's something to do with the world being bigger to me. Being closer to the ground somehow makes me closer to nature. Having passed through this scary stage, I neither understood nor appreciated. I began to be a little more adventurous in my exploration. I lifted my head from the straw and stretched my neck upwards. Faces passed by, looking down at me, funny, tender smiles on them. At that time, they all looked the same to me. I couldn't tell male and female apart, nor one individual from another. Nor did I know what they were exactly. Strangely enough, I could tell the difference between the smaller giants bright from the start. Not just from the elders, but as individuals. Several looked down at me, laughing and making strange noises with their mouths, peering expectantly at the taller ones behind. Above these giants, I could see enormous gray brick buildings stretching far into the sky. The sky itself seemed so blue, so deep and so clear. The sky is the purest thing I've ever known, whether it's the cold azure of dawn, the striking cobalt of day, or the deepest silver, porphyated blackness of night. On the darkest day, when the sky is masked by sullen clouds, the tiniest patch of blue makes my heart jump a little. It seemed then as if I was seeing sky for the first time, in the way I was, through different eyes. I gazed rapturously at the blue ceiling for several moments, until the rays of the sun made my eyes go sober, causing me to blink rapidly. Then I realized what I was. I wasn't shocked, for my new brain was still functioning mainly as it should, and memories were still lying dormant within it. I accepted that what I was. 
Only later did I question my new beginning. That time, I thought it was perfectly normal to be a dog.